Hy-Vee. Uh, here in the Hy-Vee studio with me to open the hour, a guy that I should just keep in the studio because news keeps breaking all the time uh, around him. It is the CEO of Des Moines Waterworks, Bill Stell. Bill, welcome back to the studio. Appreciate it. Jeff, uh, always great to be here. Thanks for having me on a gloomy day. <laughs> I know. I know. Exactly right. This, uh, this is, I guess we're going to get a little bit of more winter before we get a little more spring these days. So, of course, I had, I had called you in, Bill. I wanted to talk to you about the dismissal of the lawsuit against the drainage districts, but then more news broke last night, which is that Des Moines City Council voted to uh, support a legislative bill which would basically dismantle Des Moines Waterworks and it would put the water utility under the control of Des Moines. Uh, you have already expressed some concerns about that bill, but for those people that are really trying to get themselves up to speed on this issue, give me your take on this and why you're concerned about a vote like that. Well, the dismantling, uh, Jeff, is a huge concern for us because uh, water utilities were set up with an option to be independent from city governments, yeah. and we've been doing it for about 100 years independent of the city government. I worked for the city of Des Moines for a number of years. I know that they treat utilities like a piggy bank. Uh, they shake out money whenever they get a hankering for it. Uh, we see that in the franchise fees that we have here in Des Moines, which is essentially a sales tax on gas and electric use. We're very concerned that the city of Des Moines and their desperation for money will turn to Des Moines Waterworks uh, and divert money that otherwise should be put into our production and distribution systems to make sure the water is safe as we deliver it to our customers here in Des Moines and in the suburbs. So very concerned about that. City of Des Moines last night, as you mentioned, uh, voted to support uh, House File 484. Interestingly enough, the city of West Des Moines decided to be neutral. Their waterworks would be dismembered as part of the legislation. The city of Urbandale, which has the third waterworks uh, here in Polk County, uh, actually uh, has taken a position against it. So we've got all three uh, affected water boards, uh, city governments all over the board. Ultimately, the city of Des Moines apparently is foaming at the mouth for an opportunity to get at cash associated with Des Moines Waterworks. We resist that and think it's a, a huge disservice to our customers and ratepayers. I want to talk to you. Uh, let's go to the foundational issue here. The, the lawsuit that Waterworks had filed against the three northern Iowa drainage dis di districts got dismissed uh, over the uh, last Friday. Let's go to that, that, that primary issue for people. Again, I, I'm, I'm talking to people that are trying to get themselves up to speed on the issue. What is the concerns with nitrates in the water that really started this big discussion, Bill, anyway? What was the concern by Waterworks, or what is the concern by Waterworks? The, the, the concern that we have, Jeff, here uh, in Des Moines, where we're at the confluence of the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers, we draw our surface water from those rivers. Um, what's called the Des Moines Lope, that's the Des Moines and Raccoon River Valleys, are really pretty unique uh, in Iowa and in the United States. They're heavily drainage tiled. That drainage tile, in our view, brings a a quantity of water and a low quality of water into our watersheds. It's very unique uh, for us. Drainage districts are uh, a dominant force in agriculture here in the Des Moines Lobe and the Des Moines Raccoon River Valleys. Drainage districts are far less uh, prevalent throughout the rest of the state in southern Iowa. Uh, your home, obviously, or former home, uh, not an area that has a lot of drainage districts. So we think we have some unique hydrogeology here We've had the world's largest nitrate removal facility for about 25 years. That facility is aging, and realistically, it's undersized for the frequency of nitrate concentrations we're seeing in the rivers. Uh, we've been involved in litigation that was dismissed last week, and I think it's important sometimes to kind of remind ourselves that as folks in a democracy, uh, we lose. Um, and rather than talk about, you know, so-called judges or the system being rigged, uh, uh, I think we need to recognize that the rule of law is important in our society, and uh, we certainly congratulate the Farm Bureau and their allies who are on the other side of this litigation from us. Uh, they've won, and they've won fair and square, and we recognize that, and we'll move forward. Uh, but ultimately, we see this as an opportunity for industrial ag, for ag leaders in the state, to move forward constructively with a nutrient reduction strategy, Iowa's policy that basically says that voluntary conservation practices should be used to protect uh, the environment in the state. Uh, we're no longer a distraction um, or some kind of use of resources. Uh, it's time to walk the talk and let's make Iowa's water uh, cleaner and better through the use of conservation practices 
uh, throughout Iowa. So when you say move forward, you know, I'm a firm believer that Iowa nice is not a just a thing we say. I, I mean, I think it's people in this state are civil to each other. They have disagreements. They move on with their lives. Is there a way for Des Moines Waterworks to meet with conservation groups, ag groups that were on the other side of this issue and say, hey, can we now sit down and talk about this? Here's our concern. How can we resolve this issue? Absolutely, Jeff. We, we uh, look forward to the opportunity to meet with commodity groups and ag leaders to move forward collaboratively, I think is the term that's been used and misused a little bit uh, in the past. But we want a definite focus on our watersheds, the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers, again, have unique problems that we think demand attention. And we're looking for something more than lip service. We're looking for results. Uh, we've got to see results. Um, because this is a public health issue. It's an economic issue, but it's also a public health issue. Yeah, tell me a little bit about what the concerns are. We talk about nitrates in the water. This has been a huge issue for you. First of all, why was it a concern specifically of water works? What was, what was overwhelming to you, Bill, about it? And what are the health concerns? Uh, Jeff, the health concerns, uh, peer-reviewed science really points to a risk of uh, young children six months or younger getting something called blue baby syndrome from exposure to amounts of a nitrate over 10 parts per million, 10 milligrams per liter. There's emerging science that says that there are larger risk uh, factors and larger groups uh, implicated by high nitrate levels. Realistically for us, uh, we're talking about nutrient management and that's something that certainly your listeners appreciate and understand um, and want to move forward, I'm confident. We are seeing issues that are moving beyond nitrate concentrations. Blue-green algae is a phenomenon that we're seeing more and more, unfortunately, even on rivers. You hear about it with the Great Lakes in particular, but it's beginning to uh, seep, we think, into the rivers with some frequency. Um, Blue-green algae creates a, a toxin that's very, very difficult to treat in drinking water. Uh, we're seeing more of that and certainly have a concern as we move forward that we can work with a number of groups to reduce that risk to our rate payers and, again, improve uh, the quality of Iowa's rivers, lakes, and streams. And Bill, on my American Toppers and Accessory Text Line, this is the classic argument that I know that you hear all the time because farmers will then push back and people in rural areas going, well, you've got all these people in the city and they're applying all this stuff to their lawns and, and there's all these things going on in the urban area. Aren't you equally concerned about that? So address that for me. What is the role that everybody plays in regard to what's going on in the water? You know, I very much appreciate that question. Um, and we do hear that on a regular basis and should hear it on a regular basis. Really, uh, are we concerned about it? Sure, we're concerned about it. Uh, nutrient pollution doesn't just come from farms. Um, but the reality is in our watersheds, uh, there are about 10,000 square miles and the land use in those watersheds are overwhelmingly industrial ag. There aren't many suburban lawns or golf courses. That isn't to say that suburban lawns and golf courses uh, don't contribute to nutrient management concerns, but they're really a relatively small concern. But uh, that being said, uh, having folks pour on a bunch of Scott's Turf Builder or whatever it may be on their lawns or their golf courses uh, it certainly is a problem and is a concern. And when we have an opportunity to talk with uh, neighborhoods and certainly park managers, we make the same point. But in our watersheds, the far largest uh, contributor and certainly the far largest contributor to golf hypoxia is from agricultural sources, not from your front yard or the golf course that uh, some folks want to play on. So to wrap up, Bill, uh, you still have a you have legislation right now uh, that is uh, going to basically dismantle the Des Moines Waterworks. I imagine you want to make your case to the public to say, please tell your legislator not a good idea. Absolutely. House File 484, uh, which is pending now in the Iowa House, would dismantle, dismember the Des Moines, the West Des Moines and the Urbandale Water Boards. We think that is an overreach, a violation of basic local governance principles. If a Des Moines legislator would go to go Washington County and try to reorganize their drainage districts, I'm very confident there would be strong pushback as where, well there should be. Um, we have uh, great governance of our water boards here locally. Um, we think independence from cities is very important. We're very concerned about the city of Des Moines reaching into our coffers and taking money and diverting it for their uses and uh, impacting our commitment 
uh, to clean water and providing safe, affordable, abundant drinking water for central Iowans. Bill Stelp, thanks very much for taking the time, as usual. Jeff, a pleasure.